Greetings and welcome back to Archeo Soup Towers on this, the second night of Halloween week 2019. This evening we set our sights firmly on the darker instincts of humanity. Those people who hunt people. Serial killers, we have come to name them, and of course there are some, some very famous historical examples. Bell Gunness, H. H. Holmes, and of course Jack the Ripper, who some people call the first true serial killer. However, history and archaeology tell a different tale. It seems that people have been hunting people for much longer than most would care to know. History is replete with tales of monsters, werewolves and vampires, lion men in Africa, which may be based on the crimes of historic serial killers. Indeed, the image of the lion man is prehistoric in its origin. But despite a potential history as old as humanity itself, it is to Han Dynasty China that we turn for our first recorded example of a potential serial killer. The Han Dynasty existed for approximately 400 years, between 202 BC and 220 AD. It was the Chinese historian Sima Qian who recorded the maraudings of a well-connected serial killer, the nephew of the emperor himself, Jing of Han. Liu Pengli would go out on marauding expeditions with twenty or thirty slaves at a time, or simply men who were outlaws, murdering people and seizing their belongings for the sheer sport of it. People across the kingdom knew of Liu's murderous appetites, but it was not until the twenty-ninth year of the Emperor's reign that a report was brought to his attention. Eventually it was established that the Emperor's nephew had murdered at least one hundred people, and court officials requested that Liu be executed. However, the Emperor was merciful. Liu was made a commoner and banished, and presumably was free to kill again in relative obscurity. It is in 15th century France that we find our next serial killer candidate. Gilles de Rey was one of the richest men in Europe and a knight. Beloved for a time by the French people, he had been a compatriot of Joan of Arc herself. However, Gilles was an arrogant, vain man who spent all his money and, long story short, turned to alchemy to create gold. Enter the Italian Francois Prelati, who claimed that he could summon a demon named Baron who would be able to manifest gold. In return for sacrifice, of course. Gilles promptly went about tempting and or kidnapping children to his castle at Machacoul, there, he would not only kill them or have them killed, but he also indulged in molestation of the most despicable order. It is not certain, because of the class of people he was dealing with, records were scant, but in all it is estimated that he sexually assaulted and murdered between 80 and 800 young people. He was put on trial and sentenced to death by hanging and burning. Our next candidate hails from 16th century Germany. This is the tale of Peter Stump. It is not known when Peter Stump was born, but he was accused of crimes against the Holy Roman Empire in the form of cannibalizing 18 human beings. During his trial, which almost certainly involved 
torture, he confessed to being a practitioner of black magic, to being a werewolf, and of being in league with Satan himself, who had given him a belt which made him feel immortal. We may not know when Peter Stump was born, but we know when he was executed. October the 31st, 1589, saw him, his daughter, and his mistress executed in the most astonishingly brutal manner, wholly inappropriate for full description in this video. Next we go to 17th century Transylvania and the Hungarian aristocrat Elizabeth Batori. Elizabeth is in the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's most prolific female murderer. The highest number of victims cited during Countess Batori's trial was 650, though this number is debated. What is clear is that she, along with four collaborators, were accused of torturing and killing hundreds of young women between 1585 and 1609. During her trial, more than 300 witnesses and survivors came forward, attesting to her sadistic serial murders, along with physical evidence of horribly mutilated and dead or dying imprisoned girls found when she was arrested. Though later stories that she would bathe in the blood of virgins to retain her youth are folklore. They were made up long after she died. Owing to her rank and family name, she was not executed for her crimes. Rather, she was imprisoned in Chuchica Castle in modern-day Slovakia. After four years imprisoned in a windowless room, she was discovered dead by a family member in 1614, aged 54. Our penultimate serial killer of the night hails from India and the infamous Thuggy Cult. The so-called Thuggy Cult were an organized gang of professional robbers and murderers. I first came across the name in the movie Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. In real life, the gang's name is based on the Hindi word thag, meaning swindler or deceiver and is in turn the root of the English word thug. As notorious as the thuggy were, it was one particular member who is likely to have been a serial killer. Thug Beram, also known as Buram Jemadar and the King of Thugs. He was a local leader of the cult in northern central India and is often thought to be one of the world's most prolific serial killers. He is thought to have committed up to 931 murders by strangulation between 1790 and 1840, performed with a ceremonial ramal, a special handkerchief or bandana worn by Sikh men who cut their hair when they are on Gurdwara. For 50 years he murdered for pleasure and profit and he was only stopped when he was executed in 1840. Our final serial killer of the night was a Russian noblewoman, Darya Nikolaevna Soltikova. It is difficult to find a definitive portrait of the woman. I put both here for your consideration. But we do know that having married into a wealthy family, she was widowed at the age of 26. She inherited the entire estate from her husband, as well as all the humans who worked upon it. Between 1755 and 1762, when Empress Catherine II finally decided to enforce the law upon Daria, effectively part of a publicity stunt, a so-called lawfulness initiative, there were 138 suspicious deaths attributed to her harsh 
and vicious treatment. She was found guilty of beating, mutilating and torturing 38 peasants for no sensible reason, and in total it is thought as many as 190 souls met their end at her hands. In particular, she seemed to take a disliking to young female serfs. <laughs> and so you see the hunting of humans by their compatriots is far from a modern phenomenon indeed it's not tied to one place or another men or women or even I dare say children anyone can have a go. <laughs> and so, consider yourself adequately warned. And until tomorrow, sleep well. Happy Halloween. <laughs>